my name is Mona al Mukadam, and I'm an Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery at the University of Pennsylvania. And I'm also the Principal Investigator on the clinical trials here at FOP. So a disclosure, I was uh, the principal investigator of the Palo Verde clinical trial here at Penn. And I also re received research funding from Clementia Ibsen for another clinical trial, uh, as well as Regeneron um, and Insight. Um, so what is FOP? Uh, FOP stands for fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. So in short, we say FOP, so I'll be saying FOP throughout this uh, presentation. But FOP is an ultra-rare disease. So we know of about 1,000 patients around the world. We suspect maybe there should be about 5,000, but we know of only about 1,000 around the world. So this is an ultra-rare disease. It's a genetic disease, meaning that it's an inheritable disease. However, most of the patients that we know have a sporadic mutation, meaning that they acquired it. Uh, um, they, they didn't acquire it from their parents, but it was a spontaneous mutation that happened. Um, and this mutation that happened causes the skeletal muscles, the connective tissue, the ligaments, the fascia, all turn into bone. And when this extra bone forms, patients lose their mobility and their ability to move, and they have like a secondary skeleton. The second aspect of FOP is this malformed big toes. So usually patients are born with this disease. So as I mentioned, it is a genetic disease. It could be an inherited disease. So kids are born with this um, disease and they have the you know, classic malformation in their big toe where their big toe is missing a joint, it's curved uh, and they have hallus valgus. Other than that, the kids look completely normal. No one would ever guess that they have FOP. They might have some other changes like stiffness in their neck. Uh, when they're babies, they might not crawl normally. But other than that, most of the parents would, not, would never guess that their kids have this really devastating disease. And then during sometime during the first decade of life is when they start developing these very painful swellings in their body, uh, what we term, what we call as flare-ups. And these flare-ups usually start in the head and in the neck in children, as well as in the back. And these flare-ups can then lead into this extra bone formation that we were talking about. So as our patients uh, develop new bone formation, uh, they're gonna you know, lose more and more mobility. This extra bone does not go away. And so with time, they just accumulate this extra bone formation. Um, the why does FOP happen or why do these flare-ups happen? We don't really know. So flare-ups, uh, you know, these soft tissue swellings that we refer to that happen in the first decade of life, uh, they can happen spontaneously without any trauma. But we also recognize that trauma, like a severe fall or intramuscular immunizations or surgery or a biopsy uh, can really lead to this extra um, more inflammation in the body. Um, and that can cause these, what we call flare-ups or soft tissue swelling, uh, which can then later on turn into bone. Um, as we're doing more and more clinical research in this disease, we're trying, we're starting to appreciate that not all flare-ups turn into bone. Maybe about 50% of these soft tissue swelling can turn into bone. And what we've also always heard from our patients is that they wake up one day and they've lost their ability to move a certain joint without having these preceding flare-up symptoms. And so we also recognize that the disease can progress uh, without these classic flare-ups or extra bone formation. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a genetic disease and what we refer to as the FOP gene, it's actually, um, there's a pathogenic variant in ACVR1 gene. Uh, which is a BMP type 1 receptor. And what this gene mutation does, it makes it more sensitive to certain ligands, including activin A and BMP, which then leads to uh, downstream activation through SMAD 1, 5, and 8, which then leads to um, endochondrial bone formation. So as I mentioned, with, with FOP, we have the soft tissue flare-ups, or and when patients underwent biopsies, which we don't recommend that for FOP patients, we see that in the early stages, there's severe inflammation um, 
and we see muscle breakdown. And this is what we call the catabolic phase. But when this happens, this inflammation releases all these ligands, BMP and active in A, which then um, activate the ACVR1 receptor and leads to this downstream effect where you have then endochondrial bone formation, where bone is uh, formed uh, from a um, cartilaginous scaffold.